Close your eyes and watch your breath. Notice when it comes in, notice when it goes out. And notice when it's comfortable. If it's not comfortable, you can change. You may longer, shorter, faster, slower. See what kind of breathing would feel good for the body right now. We ordinarily look for our happiness and pleasure in things outside, sights, sounds, smells, tastes, tactile sensations. And that kind of happiness and pleasure is, is very ephemeral. These things come and they go very quickly. We spend a lot of time thinking about them. In other words, we're thinking about what we don't have, what we would like to have or what we used to have. And so there's stress even in the thought of the things we used to have and the things we would like to have. But here you're focused on what you've got right here, right now. Just improve what you've got right here, right now, and you find you've got a good place for the mind to stay. This is called renunciation. When we hear the word renunciation, we think of having to go away and wear hair shirts and just live on bread and water. But that's not what the Buddha is talking about. He's saying there's a higher form of happiness that you can find simply by inhabiting your body from within, learning how to adjust the breath, and use the breath to adjust the different other different properties inside your internal sense of the body. So you can find a sense of well-being right here. And this, he says, is a kind of seclusion. In other words, you're not thinking about the pleasures you used to have or the pleasures you're going to have. You think about what you've got right here, right now. And this allows the mind to settle down and find some peace, because it's only when the mind can settle down and find some peace that it really does have true happiness. You think of the happiness that you get from other things. It's As long as you can stay with it, you're happy, but it moves, it changes, and then you're left without it. Whereas this, once you develop the skill, can stay with you for a long period of time. This is why the Buddha said, there is no happiness other than peace. I and mean, this is a long section of peace that you can find here. The peace where the mind doesn't have to go anyplace else, doesn't have to think up ideas about what it's going to eat, what it's, other pleasures it's going to take. You've got a sense of well-being right here. Learn how to appreciate this. We tend to overlook it. Occasionally it arises here and there, but we really don't make any systematic look at how we can maintain it. But here the Buddha's giving you a skill how to maintain that sense of well-being inside, even when things outside are not what you want. And the world has its ups and downs, and what you need is a skill that keeps you on an even keel regardless of the ups, regardless of the downs. It protects you from getting careless when the ups come, and it protects you getting, from getting depressed or upset when the downs come. You can stay on an even keel without a lot of drama, without a lot of turmoil. So learn that renunciation is not depriving you of anything. It's actually you're making a trade. You're trading in all your thoughts that you'd like this, you'd like that, and for something you've actually got. You've got the breath right here. Learn to be familiar with the breath. Learn the different ins and outs of the breath to see what it has to offer. And you find that it can get a sense of soothing refreshment going down through the chest, going down through the torso. As it gets more and more sensitive to the breath, you realize there's breath energy everywhere in the body. And here you are sitting surrounded by a sense of ease and pleasure, which doesn't require anything from outside at all. All it requires is that your focus and that your determination to stay here and learn these skills, which more than repay you. This is when your mind rises to a higher level of well-being. And then it can look at the other pleasures of the world and see which ones are worth going for and which ones are not. Because a lot of time we go for pleasure simply because we're hungry. Something comes by and it looks good and we snatch at it. We don't think about where is this going to take us, where is, where, where is it going to lead us. But if there's a sense of well-being in the mind, then you can look with a little bit more detachment at what's coming by and decide, okay, this is worthwhile and that's not. You can see where this is going, where that's going. And think about the long term. So give your mind a sense of the well-being that comes with renunciation. As the Buddha said, when you see renunciation as peace, okay, that's when the mind is beginning to look after itself properly. And again, it's not depriving yourself, it's making a good trade. You're trading candy for gold, the gold of a state of mind that's at ease and at peace, and is able and willing to withstand whatever comes up in the world around. That's really valuable, so make sure that you find this sense of well-being and peace. As for the other pleasures of the world, okay, as long as they don't harm the mind, they're okay. The Buddha didn't say that pleasure is bad, it's simply our clinging to our ideas of this and that and the other thing, this has to be this way, that has to be that way, that actually weakens the mind, because it can depend only on hothouse conditions in order to be happy. But here you've got something that 
like a plant that can live anywhere, thrive anywhere. That means you can go anywhere and be at your ease. <laughs>